Maybe you go for the ogre now. So bloodlust for the TB. Yeah. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Secret now. Probably want to pick the hero. Well, they have lost pick. You can go for Ember now. But then you also don't want to pick. The, I think you pick Puppy's hero actually. So. Maybe a Chen, so they can secure this early game. And they might want to heal that they're a little bit more impact than Chen. Undying, perhaps? I would actually like Undying. I kind of like the Undying versus Phoenix matchup. Because Supernova goes down, you, you can use Tombstone more often than Supernova, and well, as soon as it is down, you can use the Sensor War on the Stampede to retreat away from where the Supernova is strongest to rather where the Tombstone is strongest. It's harder for VP to chase you all the way up. And in this game, they don't actually have many good heroes for dealing with the, the Tombstone, with the exception of the TB. Secret, do pick the Ember. A hashtag called it. Oh, you know what I should probably do? I should probably change the title on the YouTube stream because I think I left that as saying NIP versus EG. Whoops. Whoops, whoops. Ten seconds remaining. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Five seconds remaining. <gasps> Magnus banned at the end, as well as the Huskar. So VP seems to believe that Team Secret are actually running the Centaur for Puppy. Which is actually a possibility. We've seen him do that often enough. That I could I could very easily believe that that's the case. Yep, I did leave it still saying that uh five seconds remaining. That it was uh, previous series NIP. Versus EG, my bad. Feels bad. But it's all good. I fixed it. It's no problem. Virtus froze. Turn to silence. And did I not at this point? Oh no, no, wasn't. Did I say silencer? I thought silencer instead of Rubik. I thought that was going to be the hero. But I didn't say it. Unless I did, I don't know. I don't remember. I definitely thought it, and I'm not surprised that they go for this last pick silencer. It's a really good silencer game, actually. Uh, all these heroes on the side of VP, in particular the ogre. The ogre needs to cost a lot of spells to be. All of them need spells to be relevant, except TB perhaps. But if you can catch TB before he's able to use the metamorph, you're in a really good position. And three of these heroes on the side of VP don't actually buy all that often items to counteract lower silence. I mean, this tournament, we have been seeing a greater proliferation of Yule Scepters on both the Phoenix as well as the Earthshaker. So, strictly speaking, that's not true. What? 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 No one Invoker. Oh, shit. I don't remember the last time I've seen no one play Invoker. But no one can play anything. He's an amazing player. Homeboy is pretty hot at this Dota thing. I'm down. I'm down. Uh, this is a hero that's going to buy BKB, which you absolutely need in this game, versus the Team Secret lineup. Uh, some impeccable team fight to add on to what they already have with the Phoenix, as well as the Earthshaker. A hero that can beat out mid one in the lane. If you go for the Wex build on this Invoker, you're pretty good against Ember Spirit. And the Tornado immediately dispels the Flame God that can be put to bear by mid one. Nah, I, I, I fucks with this heavy. 
I'm down. Invoker, mid one invoker, I'm ready. My body is ready. So ladies and gentlemen, the final game, it's finally about to end and Team Secret playing up against Virtus Pro, Ramses on the Terror Blade, the hero that has been the bane of our existence all day today. Uh, it's his first time playing it though, so he's played, what did he play with, Morphling, PL, and now the Terror Blade. So he's played all the cancer heroes. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide if that's better or worse than only playing a few of them. No one will be playing the Invoker right now. Roger on the Earthshaker, Solo on the Ogre Mage Iron, last but not least, Pasha reprising his role as the Phoenix where he did really great stuff. And no one's like, let's have some fun. Let's enjoy life. He, en he enjoyed dumpstering mid one in the previous game, but mid one does have Ember Spirit, so this is a hero that's less likely to experience such a terrible fate in the mid lane. Zai, right next to him on the Centaur. Uh, one game, one with this hero. Let's see if that happens again in game number three. Yep, so on the Rubik. Puppy on the Silencer. And last but not least is going to be El Nisha. Wait, actually, there's something I want to do quickly. Nisha's playing on that Arc Warden. And here we go. All these lanes, one of the things that I do suspect is going to happen in this game uh, that didn't happen in the previous one is the fact that across the field, Team Secret is not actually just going to get dumpstered in the team fights. They have an ability to actually fight back. They have Silencer, they have Stampede, they have Ember Spirit. They're actually smoked up right now. And we're hoping to find somebody here. Oh, what are these... What are these that Ember Spirit has? It's hooks instead of regular swords. Okay. This is a really cool set. Ach, check his hair. Make him look. This actually does look like one of those. Um, looks like an outfit from. What's that movie? House of Flying Daggers. Looks exactly like that. Let's shake things up. Let's shake things up. And the game is now underway. That was skill, all right. Pure skill. Bounty runes traded equivalently across the board. Yeah. So in this game, uh, all right, cool. Yeah. The most important thing I do believe is that should be happening here is they need to make sure that mid one doesn't have a turret of time as in game number one or game number two rather because they need him to be able to create space for this awkward and as much as possible. Nisha at top for the time being is going to be yet again zoned out by Pasha. These fire spirits are quite annoying when laid out onto an Arc Warden. But not really anything to worry about too much for him at the moment. He's more or less comfortable just soaking up some of this farm and just chilling as it were. He's gonna take some damage with the Spark Rate, but it's gonna be fine in the long run. At bottom, we see Ramses against Zai. I wonder, can they shut down is it possible for them to shut down Ramses as hard as they want to? Uh, do you guys see where Roger has those creeps? That fissure block helps a lot. Mid one now. Dealing with this damage as much as humanly possible. Ramses. Uh, can Ramses actually find kills here? No one is perhaps going to try go on... Wait, is he going x this game? Oh my goodness. I don't agree with this at all. I don't agree whatsoever with him going for this build. 
the one primary benefit, I suppose, is that it does give them global potential and it gives him damage and scalability into the late game. But we've also seen some invokers only put the two points into the Exhort and then switch it up for the Wex later on. So that could also be the case for him. But simultaneously, it might not be. And mid one. Gonna apply some pressure right now towards the Invoker. But the Invoker will be... It'll be fine. This isn't really a lame... Because he went for this Exort build as well, he can't actually beat the in Ember Spirit. Because you can't like use Tornado to wave through the Creep Wave. Uh, in this instance, the Ember Spirit it definitely does have a greater ability to win the lane than you do. And Zai at bottom getting off the hoof stomp. They lift now onto Ramses. Ramses tossed back towards these creeps. So no, just trying to make sure that Ramses can't really move. They cancel out the cell thanks to Yapso's last right click. But they will not be able to actually kill anybody now. Metamorphosis used up by the Terror Blade. Reflection out onto Zai. Early level reflection with the Fire Blast as well. And they should be able to find the kill. Zai is spaced out by Ramses. And Ramses will end up falling down. First blood going the way of Virtus Pro. Ramsey's on the Terror Blade. Already off to a hot start. We see Roger now trying to zone back Puppy so that this Puppy doesn't use... Oh, Roger actually might just try and block this pull camp with his body. But he's going to retreat to the other side of the map where things are relatively safe. He picks up a haste rune now. Use it. He's about to pick it up. We're just preparing it. Maybe I want no one to be able to grab it, but Invoker has now put a point into the Wex, though, at level 4 and 5. At 5, he got the second point into the Quas. Yep, so might try to get this kill onto him. Mid one does have level 2 Flame Guard as well as the Searing Chains. He's level 5 right now. He's waiting to decide if he's going to put the next point into the Searing Chains or third point into Flame Guard. And Haste June triggered out by the Earthshaker. And Yapso left this lane. To go back to the bottom side of the map. Pasha. Oh. Puppy has a there's a history on Roger right now. He's going to try to bring down Puppy. He's gonna succeed in doing so, and he's just gonna TP away as well. Roger doesn't even die there. He walks away and he's like, peace out, we And they do also manage to get both body runes on that side of the map, so Puppy. His life given up, not even for a decent cause. All in vain, as his team able to walk away right now. Down towards bottom, Hoff Stomp, we see it catching onto two heroes, Ramses, as well as Solo. And Ramses yet again escapes the double edge, not being enough damage coming in from the center to ensure that they are able to find that kill. Although now Centaur is really coming into vogue in a situation where not going to be able to actually kill this hero anymore. Uh, we see Icarus dive away. Invoker finishing off a pair of phase boots. Is going to be able to grab this regen rune. And it has put the value point into the Wex, but it does still seem like this is going to be an Exhort Invoker. Even the fact, the fact that he hasn't tried to build into an Urn of Shadows or a Spirit Vessel or anything. Right now, he's just going to contest up against mid one in the mid lane. And he's starting to supersede. Oh, here we go. They're going to try to get this kill onto mid one. The Cold Snap was expended, but Roger. Wasn't there with the fissure in time to make sure that it landed directly onto the Ember Spirit's head. There's going to be the tornado immediately getting rid of that Flame Guard. And mid one. Able to escape without dying. TP's to safety. And he's, he's fine. He's okay. He's Gucci. Everything is A-okay for him. We see now Icarus die from Pasha. 
Top side of the map, he just wants to leave. Doesn't want to actually get encroached upon right now. Uh, there is that uh, pretty nice fissure from Roger onto Puppy, ensuring that they get the kill. Silencer. Dead again. Unfortunately, in the midst of getting that kill, they weren't able to guarantee that they kill Nisha as well. Mid one, smoke. Slowed down by the cold snap. But he ends up being able to escape. Yep, so though, not so lucky. Brought down by Solo as well as Ramsey's in the metamorphosis mode for the Terror Blade. And all across the map, Virtus Pro, they have four kills to their name right now. Not a single kill has gone the way of Team Secret. So this Dire side, struggling at the moment. They're gonna wanna find some way to get back into the game. Naraja at top, their Fissure catches two heroes, Nisha, both of them actually, Tempest double as well as the real version. Nisha, can he TP out in time? Yes, he can. But they might be able to kill the Tempest double. And collect the gold, therefore. And yep, it is gonna go the way of Pasha. 180 gold in the bank, thank you. Like, thank you, thank you kindly. Mid one, heading to the top side of the map. He, are they gonna lane swap here? Or do they just want mid one to kill Pasha? I guess Pasha knows he can't really lane against mid one right now. A single steering chains and he dies. That was skill, all right. And Pasha is dodging everything though. Has he just baited mid one to his doom? He might have just done so. There's the cold snap. Oh, the unfortunate timing of the invoker showing up right then and there with a tornado. Tossing mid one into the air. Does he have sunstrike though? And it is actually going to be this west invoker. Mid one will dodge the sunstrike. Should be fine. The in increased movement speed from no one though. Closing the gap. Mid one will be able to get to the shrine however. And ends up staying alive. Bottom though, maybe Solo dies. But yeah, Solo is not gonna. Oh no, the Sunder from Ramsey is forcing back Yap, so they do get the kill onto Solo eventually. Your name shall be forgotten. But ultimately, doesn't really matter. And with that kill. Onto Yapso. And Yapso and Solo. Well, Solo dies, not Yapso. Mid one, pretty miffed about the fact that he wasn't able to find a kill earlier. Is able to bring down Roger right now though. Roger was trying to claim a sentry or a bounty rune for himself. Zai will lose his life doing the same thing. Dies at the spot on bounty rune spot. Middle tower was under attack. Not really too much you can do about that one. Feels pretty bad man. Nisha at the very least will be able to finish off the necro book. This game going much better than game number two for this arc warden. In large part due to the fact that, yeah sure, although Ember Spirit is behind no one, no one's actually going to get another kill onto Puppy at top, but he will succeed in doing so. Mid one, meantime, is actually the one that kills a Terror Blade at bottom. And that's exactly what you need out of this Ember Spirit. And one of the reasons why Ember is good against the TB, the large amount of burst damage that you have available to you. Makes it difficult for TB to even survive long enough to guarantee the Sunder. Because that's the thing, it takes a while before TB has high amounts of HP, even when he has armor. Zai, Stampede, running past no one. No one will not be able to trigger off the EMP onto Zai. First while though, at bottom, mid one, in some trouble. Needs to be able to get out of here with the remnants. He remnants through, but there's still a TP coming in from the Phoenix Pasha. Wants to try and close the gap. Nice fissure from Roger. Who, no, that was Yapso fissure. He stole it from Roger. In fact, they're going to be able to escape. Oh no, the Echo Slam used mid one. They want this kill too badly to be able to let him go. They even commit the ultimate from the Earthshaker. And with that Echo Slam. They get the kill. They got him. That was not bad. Not bad. Simultaneously, although I do think one of the things that Team Secret is going to have to look out for 
Oh wait, hold that thought. Bottom lane, Fissure going out onto Pasha. Pasha gonna get lifted. They wanna try and burst him down. They know that there's no supernova available. They wanna get this kill as soon as humanly possible. Can they get him? He's burning down from his own fire spirits and he will die. But now EMP onto mid one with the cold slap as well. With the inner shadow slowing him down, but not enough actual damage to get this kill. And mid one will be A-OK. -okay. Even has a remnant available in three seconds. And he scouts that Yapso is getting gone on, so... Mid one, I don't know how you're going to get out of here, buddy. Hide in the trees until you have your TP available again. Uh, am I going to juke through it? He's fine. Top tower is under attack. Nisha erstwhile. Uh, it took him about 19 minutes in the previous game to get the hand of Midas. This go around, it will be available much faster. As Nisha has overtaken the Terror Blade as the overall net worth farmer. They're both farming the jungle right now. Ramsey's farming by the Ancients and the Secret Shop of the Radiant side. Nisha doing Dire Triangle. Roger's halfway towards having Blink Dagger though. Uh, also, we have level 6 on Puppy. We haven't actually seen it being committed for a fight just yet. Still an option. It might happen now. Mid one as well as Yapso are smoked up, but... They want to find a big target. Oh, I think they saw a smoke right here. Yep, so we'll pop it. And now they see that it is indeed no one that's here. I think they know that they should probably back away. Seems like a fight. Though they actually re-smoke. They're like, nah, guys, we're smoking. Whether you like it or not. They're going to pick up this double damage rune on no one. And rotate top to kill Zai. Who... This game is going to buy a Blink Dagger. I think he looks and he's like, okay, yeah, 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 I'll buy a Blink, guys. Don't worry. We need some initiation. Can they kill him, though? They spot him. Now he's dead, for sure. The tornado doesn't connect onto him, but they've already got on out the inner shadows. And they see Solo here with the Fire Blast ready to trigger it out. Oh, actually, he juked quite nicely. He's going to be able to escape this. Oh, my God. Zai, what a player. And now mid one. Here with Poppy, they want to try to get some revenge for this. They are able to get the Searing Chains out, but the Flame Guard still flying for mid one. Global Silence will be used up right now, but I'm not sure. That's actually a really bad logo. They're going to lose this fight. They have to back away. They now get the Inner Shadows with the Double Fire Blast going out onto Ember Spirit. Ember will be able to lay out the Remnant with the Double Searing Chains. It's still alive for the time being. They are able to get the Lift Off onto the Terror Blade, putting him into a covenant but bad position. Yep, so looking for a good angle to be able to throw out the tornado, use it onto Ramses. It's not going to be comboed up with the hoof stomp though. And there's going to be a triple remnant forward from mid one. May run. Fissured right now. Kept alive still. Earn of Shadows has yet to bring him down. He has an arcane rune. Roger trying to close the gap so that he can get off the echo slam. And mid one goes back into this one. But they're going to get this kill for Nisha. And somehow, Nisha and Yapso are the only ones that die throughout all that. Look how many spells were used by everybody. And Yap is very happy to actually have died there instead of Zai or Mid One. How did Zai and Mid One both survive? That's, that's actually amazing. I thought for certain at least one of them was going to die. But turns out to not be the case. Mid one now. Oh, Zai does end up losing his life. Never mind. Zai does die eventually. Just not what I thought he would. Ember Spirit is going to be building into a more classic build with the BTs coming off first for mid one. So he wants to be able to apply his presence anywhere across the map. And now that he has this haste rune as well. Can I actually trigger this haste, run around with these BTs, try to get a kill onto somebody? Dyer's top tower is this is a very well placed ward here. This is not going to get dewarded for quite some time. So this vision that they have of this radiant side of the map this is going to remain in a present scenario for this hide of Seam Secret. Dyer's middle tower is under Roger now. Very, very close to this Blink Dagger. Good 
Now, we are just following the progress of this Earthshaker Blink Dagger because I really believe this is going to be super important for this game. The lift back onto Solo mid one. Watch yourself, buddy. He does have a haste rune, though. Gonna try and deal with Ramsey's as well. Wow, look at the damage Ramsey's puts out onto Yap. So easy kill there for the Terror Blade. They get that kill. Mid one gonna be forced to get out of dodge. They even stampede for him. That stampede on top almost saved Poppy's life too, but the last right click from no one will pursue him within the trees and end his life there. Zai. Now gonna TP bottom. Doesn't have a stampede. But with him just standing here as a beefcake makes it less likely that they're gonna jump for this. Uh, Ramsey still wants to find this Roger with the fissure, but whose Yule Scepter was that? Was that Roger's one? It was. Super make sure. That they... That wasn't Roger's one. Pasha's yours. Oh, Echo Slam flies out with the Blink Dagger just being bought. Yapso's in trouble. Enchant Stodom does get stolen by Rubik. But Yapso... Taken down a pig. After the tier 1 tower also falls. And mid one... Didn't go for the traditional Maelstrom build for the, em the Ember Spirit. Still gonna be looking for that thereafter though. Virtus Pro right now have claimed two tier 1 towers, top and bottom. A lot of kills for no one, quite a few for Ramsey's as well. And both of these heroes occupying some pretty cushy spots in the top 5 of farm. Obviously Nisha is at the top, but that's just a result of having double Necrobox, double Midas. What must happen? Radiant Scan will not connect onto anyone. I think they're trying to assess if they can smoke safely. But they don't see any of these heroes on the map. Secret might smoke now though, because they just picked up this blink dagger for Zai. Yep, there we go. Tempest double with Nisha farming with the magnetic field. And they really want to try and take a fight. They're gonna see Solo who's walking past their observer ward. And Solo's gonna de ward their observer ward. Nicely done. I was wrong. Well, it's not gonna to take too long to de ward. Right on time. Pasha. If they have vision of Pasha, this would be a pretty great kill for them to pick up. The smoke does pop. They seize Pasha now. Zai's gonna cancel out the TP home as well. Oh man, that's a perfectly, perfect, perfect, perfect time to get that blink going for the Centaur. Radiance top tower is under attack. Virtus Pro with Solo. Gonna take some damage from. Oh, yeah, Zai's gonna actually kill him. He's dead. Zai with the double edge gets another kill. And they're gonna get this bounce room. So, three out of the four bounties do go the way of Team Secret here. Ember is starting to struggle though. Mid one. Probably now, the way that this game has panned out in terms of. The lack of opportunities to get across the map and get killed. He's probably deeply regretting going for the boots, boots of travel first. Had he gone for the maelstrom first, he might have been able to get the BTs in the same amount of time anyway. But he was hoping to get these BTs, pour around the map, get get involved in fights with his team. Unfortunately, has not been the case. They might try to get this kill onto no one, but no one's not gonna die. No one has your scepter. Pasha has your scepter. BKB is being built up by the Terror Blade after the Scardi. Maybe even Manta. It already has Manta, sorry. Manta already available for Terror Blade. So the global silence, not that scary. Alright, yep, so gonna have to deal with the fact that the tower is gonna get taken before his eyes. Unless he can get off the most sick clutch. Deny of all time. Oh man, Nisha just ignoring, like annoying them with this magnetic field. And yep, so we'll now trigger off the fire spirits as they cool down, throwing them, trying to affect the terror blade with this, and they're just wasting a lot of their time. Also creating space for Ember Spirit down at bottom to be able to push out that tower, and the constant usage of the spark rate. Making this very, very annoying. Tornado come down to several heroes. There's gonna be the global silence. Supernova is dropped down. It might get destroyed very early on. It does get brought down. And Ramdis does take the tower, however. Roger looking forward to get off a stun onto somebody. Unfortunately, he's gonna get turned around upon. Puppy will be cold snapped. 
and probably lose his life here with one more right click. He hasn't died actually as of yet. The Sun Strike is going to be what kills him, but he is able to steal away some intelligence because of the fact that they bring down the Roger Earthshaker. So it's a silencer in exchange for a tier 1 tower and two hero kills. So that's uh, acceptable. Seems Seeker is actually okay with this, I think. Not happy, happy, but take what you can get sometimes. And in the meantime, Ember Spirit was able to find the tier 1 tower at bottom. So, so overall, it actually ends up being a win for Secret. With one additional hero, given that one of those heroes was an off laner. And that was a level 2 Supernova Egg as well. Uh-oh. Terra Blade is coming into the wrong neighborhood. Is he going to get triple remnanted by mid one, mid one? Thinking about it, there's going to be the Sunder. Mid one only has one remnant, that's why. Okay. Fortunately for him, his next remnant was just about to come back. Ah, that's re regrettable. It's unfortunate. Well, we do see now the Aghanim Scepter finally built for the Invoker. Okay, Solo doesn't have a Sunder, so he's easier to kill. Zai jumps, Hoof Stomp, catching onto two. They're gonna get the Remnant for it as well with the Slide of Fist coming in from mid one. Can mid one help get this kill? They have already found one. Pasha tossed up into the air by his own Yule Scepter. He does not have a way to get out of this. Doesn't have a Supernova in mid one. With the bounce from the Maelstrom, is able to get that kill as well. Getting a double for himself as the Ember Spirit. They get no one on the side of Virtus Pro. They get surprised on their side of the map. Three heroes go down, blink of an eye. And they take down the tier 1 tower next. Nisha still maintaining his position at the top of the net worth board. And Ember Spirit, now that he has both the BTs as well as the Maelstrom, and has been involved in a couple of kills, suddenly fourth net worth. Still needs to do some work to catch up to the Invoker, but it is entirely possible. No one erstwhile on the Invoker does have access to the Aghanim Scepter. He's going to put the Cold Snap EMP on a Puppy. Puppy's dead. Woo! I guess Puppy got the D ward before he died, but no hashtag not worth. Now into the Roshan Pit we go. They're going to throw out the Bloodlust onto this Terror Blade. God damn. And they give him Alacrity as well. Look how fast TB is hitting. And they are trying to claim this Rosh mid one. Going to get Tornado. There's a Fissure there as well from Roger. I think they need to be aware that something might be happening here. Roche is going to fall, however. And Zai, oh no, Zai gets the Roche. Are they going to get the Aegis? Okay, they're going to be able to still get it back for Ramsey. The Supernova will pop, stunning up Zai. Fire Blast will go out onto our Ember Spirit, but Ember will be able to zip away. Yep, so got the lift off, but will still die. Trapped in the trees by this. He got off the stolen Sunder, but... Oh, yeah, he got Sundered, rather. And a double kill with an Aegis, now present for Virtus Pro. Man, Zai actually almost got that Aegis. He almost got the deny on it. If not for the omnipresent dual scepters on this team, he would have gotten away with that too. But it wasn't for those meddling kids. Nisha was able to get claim a tier 2 tower in the bottom lane though. Now, Team Secret will probably just be playing much more on their side of the map for a while. Uh, given that nobody really wants to fight a Terror Blade with a second life and with a Sunder, so nope. Nisha, at the very least, does have the full. Majolnir for himself and just picked up a Hurricane Pike as well, which is an amazing item versus Earthshaker. You're no longer at the mercy and whims of the rocks that get risen by the fissure. You can actually move past them, force off yourself around. Also a way to force off, given that you have Tempest Double, this is extremely useful because you can aggressively force off somebody else on the enemy team. So say Ramses gets stunned while facing you guys, you force off him closer or even better yet while trying to kill Ramses, you hurricane pike him so you can't get off the Sunder right next to you. Fissure lands Puppy. Puppy will die. Sunstruck. No 
And no one is able to find the kill onto Puppy. Pretty sure it's not exactly what Puppy meant when he heard that no one is fast struck about him, but it is what it is. Nisha, the Tempest double, getting zoned back at bottom. And they will use the Necro books as well. Just trying to keep this creep wave as far pushed out as humanly possible. Ramsey's does now get the BKB as well after this Ayaskadi, as mentioned. And a little bit of bonus gold towards no one. Can't get the money for killing the Tempest double. Will they please get the money for taking down the Necro book? So he's almost level 20 on the Invoker. Going for the BKB next. Roger. Still need to crack 15. Oh, what talents did he get? He got this cold snap as well as a Chaos Meteor. Solo is still 13, nothing interesting yet. Uh, the Terror Blade got the health. And he just picked up level 18 as well. So Sunder is going to be a great spell. Has Pasha got 15? He does. So we got that Fire Spirit DPS. Didn't go Midas this game, so collecting gold a little bit more slowly. As a result, his Shiva's guard is delayed. Okay, they jump in from Zai. They want to try and bring down Roger. Roger falling very low. The Global Silence will be out here even through the BKB. They've managed to get one kill onto Roger thus far. Magnetic Field will be laid out by Nisha. Ramses is not doing any damage. Zai will eventually die. And who else is going to get brought down? The Supernova will pop. Puppy has died as well. And mid one with the Slide of Fist. They're trying to do as much as humanly possible. But Terror Blade feels like he's too strong at the moment. And Nisha. That fight seems like it's just start off in a weird place. Okay, they will be able to at least find the first life away from the Terror Blade. So the Aegis is removed from him. Mid one. Able to get the chains out onto the TB. TB. Being right clicked down by the Tempest Double. The Tempest Double is going to get destroyed, however. But the heals being there from the Sunray. I think they've done enough to dissuade Virtus Pro from actually continuing this push. I think they need to back off right now, yeah. They recognize that Centaur is about to respawn. And that BKB usage was perfect from Ramses. That's a weird place to fight, though. Just here in the trees. This is odd. Uh, they didn't finish this D-Ward on the high ground, so... There's still vision here that they need to deal with. Uh, Pasha's gonna die. Unless he supernovas, but there is no supernova. The Tempest double's gonna kill him. Or it's gonna be Zai, who's shown up. There's the Spark Wraith. The Spark Wraith hits, and Nisha able to secure the kill with that one. Feels bad, man. Mid lane. Ember Spirit, mid one. Does he have a remnant to dodge back to? It doesn't seem like it. He needs to try and get himself out of here. It's actually going to be able to kill mid one, or no one rather, thanks to the help of Yapso. Yapso also steals the Bloodlust, allows them to bring down this ogre. Oh my god. Yapso kills no one. He kills Solo. They're not going to get this bounty rune that Ramsey's just stole from them. And why is Ramsey so fast? Jesus. 450 move speed. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's why. He actually got the plus 20 move speed early on. Didn't get the evasion talent this game. That plus the Manta style makes you... Pre and the little bit of movement speed you get from the attributes of Agi from the Eye of Scardi. Makes you pretty speedy. Ember Spirit. Killing creeps in between the tier 1 and tier 2 tower to ensure that they will be able to take down the tier 1 tower in the top lane. And mid one is almost caught up to the invoker's level of farm right now. With this Lincoln Sphere being available for Ember as well, means that you can't sunder him. Much more difficult to lock him down with the Fire Blast. You can't heal him. Yeah. Basically, as long as mid one is being careful, he should not die again this game. He still can die, but if he's playing at his maximum level, he shouldn't... He shouldn't easily die, let's say. It should take a lot of effort for Virtus Pro to bring him down. And mid one now. Gonna be building into an Octarine core next. Top lane. The Tempest double. Almost brought down the tier 2 tower. It's actually gonna succeed at doing so. Oh! 87 health, just deny it, dude. Don't kid yourself, Pasha. You know this thing is, is, a, is a dead tower. Mid one shows up in the top lane. He has a remnant down on the other side of the map. So it should be easily able 
to find this tier 2 tower if they decide to go on it. Look at Ramses is positioning himself though. Behind this bad boy, knowing full well that yo, do you guys wanna take this? Let's let's take this fight. Ember Spirit, given that he hit level 20, he got the true strike. Instead of the spell amp. I guess that he imagines that Ramses is gonna be going for this butterfly this game. Ramses actually bought Lincoln Sphere. That's why though. I guess this way you can't get double edged. But Team Secret have more than enough non-single target damage. And besides, they don't have any BKB piercing disable. This is actually a bizarre Lincoln Sphere, in my opinion. But I guess it's also another regen item that he needed. He didn't have any of those for himself right now. He wanted as much mana as possible. Doesn't want it to be like, oh, it's easy walking around with six clarities all the time. Now it's Team Secret that has themselves a gold lead. Puppy has cracked 15, so get that additional gold talent. This will enable him to get a Spirit Vessel this game. Not an item they want to be playing against on the side of VP. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mid one. Gets this chains out onto this ogre. Ogre get lifted. Gonna get hoof stomped as well. Jump in from Pasha. Pasha will be able to find the supernova, but there's gonna be the global silence. Are they gonna be able to get away from this? Nisha trying to destroy the supernova, but this is just the Tempest double. The real fight is not really happening. They've backed away on Team Secret. So the supernova does pop, but now it might be their turn on Team Secret. They don't have global silence, but they still have and the ability to jump in, initiate with Zai. They might look for it right now. The lift going out onto Roger. Roger is going to lose his life. Earthshaker is dead. And Chan Totem is the only spell that was stolen though. But the rest of VP immediately will call upon the, themselves to retreat. Roche does respawn in 90 seconds. So it's a fairly long respawn. Oh, stand hope stomp. They found no one. And they reveal him with a dust of appearance, but he will pop the BKB. And Yapso stole Ghost Walk. This could actually be a really useful spell. Especially with this Blink Dagger. This means that he can be the one that tries to move in into their backlines and initiate for the team, even in the absence of having a smoke or any kind of invis item. And Team Secret, 7k gold up right now, they're just waiting to collect these bounties, one taken, oh the lift from Yapso will interrupt Pasha mid dive, they're actually gonna get the kill onto this Phoenix, Stampede is gonna get used up right now, Deafening Blast will stop Zai from running away during it, but he's pretty tanky with this Crimson Guard, Ramsey's now chasing him down, Magnetic Field will be dropped, Yapso is trying to escape on the other side of the fight, the Chaos Meteor will be dropped onto the head of the Centaur, and that will be a kill. Echo Slam now used out onto mid one. Mid one, can he get out of this? Yes, he can. Oh my god. And the Sun Strike hit at base. That's not where he's at, B. That's not where mid one is right now. Sick plays from mid one. Uh, he just has a value point booster right now. They're gonna smoke up as a unit. At bottom. Nisha forces Solo to deny the tier 3 tower here. And now they might try to go for Ramses. Okay, I'm not sure why they're going bottom. They should know that there's going to be a fight at base. Or for Roshan. Unless, of course... Unless, of course, you get Rax in the meantime. Because they've still got a Siege Wagon here. These Necro units are going to spot out that they are taking Rosh. So this is the time... Okay, now. Nah. Ember Spirit's going to go fight. They're gonna go try and take this engagement. Tornado lands out onto Puppy. Puppy is gonna die thanks to the Sun Strike as well as the Fissure. Does he have buyback? Yes, he does. Bottom racks are under threat. We see Yapso tossed up into the air with his Yule Scepter. He's gonna die as well. I'm very surprised that Secret chose to approach that as they did. Because look at bottom. One of Nisha could have taken these racks, honestly. Like, had Nisha gone bottom with BTs, triggered off a uh, Tempest double and actually attack these melee racks, they'd be dead right now, because there's no cliff as well for the side of Virtus Pro. 
and mid one wasn't in like mid one at bottom could have been attacking the racks. Hell, even if you force VP to fight in two theaters of war rather than one, that's still a win for you positively. So it's team secret, very atypical move from them. And as a result, they themselves do not have any way to fight around the Roshan pit, give away the Aegis and the Cheese to the Terrorblade. The one positive thing, I guess, of not having that much real estate across the map is that there's limited amount of things VP can do to you while they have this Aegis. Looks like mid one has also changed his mind from the Octarine core to the Shiva's guard. The Hex now. They've got the trap onto Pasha. Pasha in the air. Can they get the kill onto him? Yes, they can. And at the same time, they triggered off their stampede. And mid one now doing a great and fantastic job of splitting up this map. Oh, and it was a gem that he picked up from Pasha. Oof. That hurts, buddy. What a hex from Nisha. The Terra Blade now will complete the Monkey King bar. So choosing not to go for the Butterfly. Wants to try and deal with this magnetic field. And Nisha also hits super hard now with this Daedalus. Super hard, super fast, about to crack the 25, which, and also wait, look at this, because he got the plus 25, 125 attack range talent, and he has Hurricane Pike, his attack range at the moment is 900, that's incredible actually, 900 attack range, Jesus Christ, look at this, oh my god, it's kind of insane, he just got the BKB as well, and at level 25, what's he gonna get? The plus 350 spark rate damage or the lifesteal? That's a lot of additional damage on the spark rate, eh? Plus 350. Yo! Oh. 630 damage per spark rate. And there can be many spark rates. We'll see what he decides for. Perhaps the lifesteal because he's buying himself a moonshot. We'll see though. They are gonna be dueling for the body runes. Radiant, Radiant scan goes out. No one doesn't wanna die here. They get the body rune, although Solo's life is forfeit for this one. And uh, the hex comes out, more right clicks from Nisha. And they they've got this. Double edge from Zai will make sure that that kill happens. So what's it gonna be Nisha? I feel like the spark rate damage is really good. Even though 30% lifesteal. He's probably talking it over with his team right now. Maybe Yep is like, dude, I just stole Bloodlust, bro. I'll Bloodlust you, just never die. And I'm like, max HP forever. And he's like, fam, I just want to do damage, though. I just want to hit really hard. Shiva's God now will be complete for mid one. He can go back. To try and finish off the Octarine core now. Nobody seems to have gotten an interesting talent. It's just the stuff you should get. Well, actually, this is kind of weird. I thought Roger would have gotten a movement speed talent this game. But he's plenty fast with his Yule Scepter, actually. He doesn't need it. The additional armor is better. Zai at 20 did get the strength instead of double edge damage as you should. Yep, so has cost range at 15. And Ember Spirit now gonna try build into this Octagon Core. Butterfly will now finally be picked up by Ramses. He is uber farmed. But as well, the Aegis will now expire. Think, wait, who, did he pop the cheese already for protection? Nah, no one is carrying the cheese. And no one is about to have Lincoln's fear himself. Pasha just picked up the Aeon Disc. And though they have this gold lead for the side of Team Secret, 
it is by no means purely definitive. Zai is trying to build Aghanim Scepter, almost has it now. It's going to be very useful for mid one. Aghanim Scepter on Zeus, or oh, on Centaur. With Ember Spirit not having to use either the Slight or the Fire Remnant as ways to get like over terrain. Yeah, pretty good. What does need to be fixed about this arc order and Spark Wraith should not trigger if the enemy team is smoked or invis. Cause now that Spark Wraith went out, they know. Yo! Oh! Did you see how much damage that did? God damn. <laughs> team secret. Playing this as methodically as they can. They haven't actually even left their side of the base in so long. Trying their utmost not to make mistakes. Okay, maybe. And now... Ramsey's also 6 slotted now. There's not real much room for him to go. He even sold his boots. He's running around using the Manta style additional speed as well as the Flutter. From the butterfly. Ember Spirit. Oh, mid lane. We do see that they found Jai, but Jai Lotus Orbs himself. Stolen Fissure from Solo. And now they're gonna get the Hoof Stomp out onto him. Spark Rate is gonna be triggering the damage from Nisha. Wow. The Arc Warden is just way too strong right now. Illusion. Has this Moonshot as well. Looks like he is going to go into the his 7th slot. <laughs> Wanting to get an MKB as well. Some True Strike versus the TB2. They don't want Ramsey's to be the only one on the map that they're like, Well, we can't really hit this guy. Nisha's like, I want to hit everybody. I hit very hard right now. Sunstrike into the Roshan Pit will reveal that the the big boy is alive. So no one knows about this. Does have his Lincoln Sphere. Aghanim Scepter, the Yules and the Cheese. Choosing not to go for the Spirit Vessel next. And no one can't walk past this. Because he knows it'll trigger it. And now they're losing really badly because they have four Bounty Runes. Okay, at least three. That are taken away from them. And Team Secret will also claim the first Roche that has a Refresher Shard. Or will they? Harsha gets off his Supernova onto a high ground. Mid one in trouble. They're gonna get caught. Oh, the Global Silence will create enough space for Mid one to be able to escape because he gets off that large amount of damage. And they're gonna drop a real Spake Wraith as well as the damage from the Flux. Because Ramsey's will turn around now. BKB activated for him. He can't Lotus Orb onto. He can't use the Sunder onto the Lotus Orb Zai. So he's gonna be forced back from this fight. And the two supports got eviscerated by mid one. Yep, so helping to create the space with the lift. Tiny or silencer came through as well with the global. And this Aegis is still alive. Or the Roshan rather. It's still up online. Sunstrike will be there. Only takes down one of these Necro units. Okay, we do see they get the catch right now. They have managed to find the Earthshaker and Roger will die again. Yes, dead for 73 seconds. Cannot buy back. Tornado inside the Roshan pit catches too, but it's not gonna be enough to prevent the Roshan from going down. And Team Secret taking the first ages. Or at least for their side, the first ages. Ember Spirit will also now finish off the full Octarine Core. And here comes Team Secret. Magnetic Field laid down by Nisha onto himself. And they'll be able to take the Tier 2 tower. In the absence of this Earthshaker... Wait, why does Nisha always walk into the tornado? Like, literally every single time. He keeps walking into it. It's so strange. Zai is gonna tank up this Tier 3 tower on the high ground. Ultra tanky with 4k HP. 
and Nisha a magnetic field on him, which gives him the bonus attack speed as well, is going to be able to take down this tier 3 tower. There we go, it does fall. Pasha jumped forward, they got off the hex though, onto somebody that looked leap forward by Zai. Solo actually is going to die even before the triple remnants are available from the Ember Spirit. Tornado now catching onto the Centaur, Stampede has already been used, it gets refreshed though. So they're going to use a Stampede to try to get themselves out of trouble. Nisha with the Tempest double, forcing Arteezy, or Ramses rather, back towards the base. And Nisha, the real deal, is just fully comfortable, just saying, well, I want to finish the job, guys. And they were attacking the Rex. There will be the fortification popped by Adraja. Gotta watch this Earthshaker, watch for the Echo Slam, but... There will be no opportunity for it as they do manage to take down the melee racks in the mid lane. And Team Secret will leave happy with their bounty. They didn't pop the life of Nisha on the Arc Warden. Did they use the cheese? Nope. Cheese still sitting on mid one. They did use the refresher shard though. Zai made use of it as a secondary tool to allow him to use the MP twice in the fight. And check Yapso out. Yapso also has Ags now. So that means, let's see. Uh, that means that Leaping Enchant Totem, which actually doesn't do anything because you need the Aftershock for it to be pretty effective. Uh, the only thing, only Ags that you can steal in this game are the Ag Supernova. That's actually it. But what's more important is a two second cooldown on your ultimate. That's what you care about, really. No. Mid one gets his CP cancel out. So they might be like, oh, okay, fine. You guys on our box. Okay, they get the hex out onto our ogre solo. Gonna get jumped on by Zai. Zai putting him in trouble. They're gonna get the start of chains through him. And Ramses is inside the metamorphosis. And the Spark Wraith. We'll secure the kill and Puppy hopping out as well. The Supernova laid down by the Phoenix. Four star forward, keeping Puppy alive. Sunstrike won't connect onto any heroes. Oh, Hofstorm going onto Roger. They found the Earthshaker again. He is dead for sure. Now we see Ramses get silenced up inside his BKB form. He was still fighting here, going up on Zai. Sunder will connect onto him. Gets lifted up right now. BKB is expired. Country uses it now. Fissure stolen by the Rubik. Yapzo ensuring that they get the kill onto Terra Blade. And now we see the Hookstorm laying out onto no one. No one spark rate on him. He will die as soon as he drops down to the floor. There's no way he can escape this cataclysm will be used up by him right now. He's gonna be forced to buy back as well to come back into this one. Ramses at the forefront of the fight. Has bought back. Pasha. Doesn't have the supernova. The fissure catches two. Zai's Hookstomp was gonna catch two as well. Pasha, his dieback is gonna be followed by no one's dieback as well. And Team Secret, they have done it. They have secured their place in the grand finals of the Kuala Lumpur Major. There is no way that Virtus Pro is going to be able to stop them from this one now. Their destiny is in their hands. In fact, Ramses is going to be the last one that gets caught. He'll be able to dodge the whole stomp, but not the lift coming in from Yapso. The, oh, they lift him and toss him onto the wrong side of the fissure. Roger, you've just doomed your friend. And now they're going to kill Ramses just before the game ends. Actually, game just ends. Team Secret. Destroy the Ancient and GG well played. Wow. Wow. Alright. We expected a close series. This did not disappoint. And at the very end, Team Secret, with their Arc Warden, they say, well, you guys got lucky. You beat Nisha once. Let's see if you can beat Nisha twice. And there are 